So continuing our series on dash cams, this has come in the post, the Vantru N2 Pro. So grab a cup of tea, hit the subscribe button, settle back and let's find out if it's really any good. So if you haven't seen the other review, I'm gonna put a link to it up here, up there, across there somewhere. Uh, and there's more on the way, because there's more dash cams after coming as well. But this one we're looking at right now is called a Vantru N2 Pro. Now, I don't know what exactly is Pro about it. It's a dash cam, like many other dash cams on the market, but this one is actually a bit harder exterior, and I quite like that. It's a kind of a tough thing. It feels substantial, feels like a big chunk. Now it is plastic, but it feels like it should be metal. It actually looks that way too. You got one lens on the front and one lens on the rear here, permanently attached, so this doesn't come off. You can just twist that and make it lower or higher, and you can pan and around inside in the car, but that's about it really. Now, unlike some of the competitor ones, uh, this one has a few buttons on it. Underneath, you can actually use all the play buttons, power, fast forward, rewind, and M, which is manual version. Uh, and then at the back here, you've got two, a parking mode and a photograph one. So you can click OK to emergency record something. Uh, it just, I don't know why, it's just OK. And then there's a P for parking mode or photograph mode as well as there. Um, on the side of the unit, you've got a USB port, standard USB port. And then you have a reset button, which is housed underneath this cover, which allows you access to the SD card and a HDMI card. There's also a reset switch in there as well, so you can do both. On the far end is nothing, there's nothing under those covers. And the sucker pad is on the top. It comes as a single unit, it comes like this in the box. Uh, the sucker pad is actually really tough, very hard to remove if you, if you didn't open it. Um, and I kind of like that. But, the drawback of this one is the footage quality. That would be the biggest problem with this. Uh, the screen is a little bit on the blue side as well, so the hue of blue comes through the whole time. Uh, but actually the footage quality coming out of the camera isn't really up as good as some of the competition devices. So other drawbacks of this camera is out of the box. It doesn't record speed. Uh, the time is not set correctly, the date isn't set correctly. All these things are manually inside the menus. You'll have to go in and start messing around with them. And the big problem there is that screen on the back is tiny. But as a dash cam, it actually is okay. I mean, it does work. Um, as footage goes, it's easy to see where the mistakes are being made uh, from the quality of the actual lens inside and what it's recording. It's very hard to crop up that, to have a look at license plates. Things become very grainy around the edge of it as well because it's such a fisheye. Unfortunately, the exterior is probably one of the better ones. Now, what I don't really don't like is that this interior camera is always on. So. Uh, unlike some of the competition ones where you can remove the next one, you can take it off, you don't have to have it there, or you can just plug one in, or you can switch it off in the menus. This one is always recording. I'm not really happy about that, and I know passengers in the car become very conscious of that as well. So this is a test of the audio recording availability of the N2 Pro. I am on a motorway doing 120 km an hour, but I will point out that I'm in an electric car, which is much quieter than a petrol or diesel engine car. So there is a little bit less drone noise in the background, but I've picked a rough section of road ahead of me, as you can see on the motorway, and then behind that Toyota Vintage. Uh, I don't know if I, can, I don't know whose it is, but I can tell you the license plate is 07C for Charlie 2459er. So, uh, see if I can zoom in and actually see that when I point at uh, uh, the camera, will it crop in that far? And exterior recording here is actually okay as well. This one isn't too bad. Uh, it does a go okay in job and in, in daylight, full daylight, it's doing okay. But once it dims down a bit, the nighttime view is a little bit grainy and starts to get rough. Now, on the flip side of that, it's very affordable for this one and delivery is rather quick. It comes from the internet. You will not buy this in, uh, in shops that I've seen so far anyway. Uh, it seems to be coming from China and it's an integrated unit. So you notice up here in the top corner, there's actually a USB connector that you can plug straight into. So you don't actually have to connect it into the side of this. You can connect it to the top of this and you can add other things to it. So there's lots of options, and lots of choices. It's not bad. It's not, it's worth a punch. I do like the way that connects up there. The power comes this way. So you can drive the power in that way, which is quite nice. 
Now, as a pleasure to deal with, the people who sent me this have given me a discount code to give to you. There is a link in the description that will get you 10% off the order of this. I get nothing from that. That's not going to help me in any way. I'm just telling you that's what I negotiated on your behalf. So if you really want to buy one of these, use the link down below and get yourself 10% off straight away. Now, I'm glad you've watched this far. You're absolutely delightful. Hopefully you've hit the subscribe button. There is a list of ways of supporting my channel down below in the links. Um, hopefully you will use one of those, but if you don't, just hit the subscribe button anyway. Thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I will see you on the far side. I would normally walk away at this point, but I'm, I'm in a field. Maybe I should just go that way. See you later.